Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of Spinning Venom, aka the Venom Vlog. And today we are going to do our breakdown video. We're going to go through this trailer shot by shot. And I apologize right off the bat, you probably noticed the video quality is a little bit less than usual. And that's because this is probably going to be a long video. And I wanted to try out my webcam so I could do it all in one continuous take. So that I didn't have to keep doing like, you know, edits on my phone. And, and you know, I, I think I would have to, probably this might be an hour video. And I would have to do them in five minute increments on my phone um, in order to ensure that it's all safe and I don't have to re-record stuff. So obviously that would be a big pain in the butt, and uh, and so I I'm gonna sacrifice some video quality, um, you know, in lieu of that. Uh, so that way we can get through this in one go, because uh, it's already 11:30 at night and I can't be up all night doing this until like the wee hours of the morning. Um, so we're gonna go through this trailer uh, bit by bit, and uh, and hopefully I'll have the, the the images up and hopefully they'll be as high res as I can make them anyway, and I'll just do the best I can. So thank you for being here. Uh, we're going to start off with this first shot here, which is San Francisco, and it's a really beautiful shot. I think it's San Francisco, um, and uh, yes, I believe so, but we are going to get shots of like Tokyo and London and stuff, I think, later on in the trailer, uh, but just the overall the visual look of this film is really interesting. I'm sure they're still working on things, color correcting and stuff, but on some of the down-to-earth shots, like when the camera is like right on a character... Matthew Libatique's cinematography is really noticeable, and I think with that and mixed with like Tom Hardy's performance, I think is really going to sell this movie and get people pulled into the world at least. And it's up to the visual effects being you know done better because I know a lot of people were commenting on that. We will definitely do a you know I'll respond to all your comments from that video from the trailer reaction. I'll definitely do that video coming up soon. Um, but uh, yeah, so obviously the visual effects still have a lot to go on, and they or they have a lot of work to do in that department. Um, but at least the shots that were that are done and that looked finished, I thought looked really really great. And there are some shots in this trailer that do that are finished and look fantastic. Uh, the second shot here with Tom Hardy on his motorcycle, I actually really like the framing of this shot. But what's interesting is that it's a prison, and we talked about a prison. Um, because there's like some guards, we, we were going through the IMDB and they had a, like a, a list of actors who were playing guards and, you know, and prison warden, wardens and stuff. And, and we were like, oh, wh what scene is going to take place in a prison? So it looks like Tom Hardy's coming here to this prison to investigate a story. And I'm thinking, because we find out at the beginning of the story, you know, from the interviews and stuff from Comic-Con, that Tom Hardy's character, Eddie Brock, is uh, is kind of down on his luck. He's not had a lot of success at being a journalist and kind of fell from a high place. Like he's he's already, you know, maybe had his peak and now he's like, you know, trying to reclaim that in a way. And I think that's great for a story arc. It's someone who's kind of looking to get that power back and that confidence back. And then when he gets it back, it's a curse. It's a, it's an alien from outer space that is kind of making him do things he doesn't really want to do and puts even his already questionable morals and makes them even more questionable. Um, so I think that's a, a neat arc to go on. Uh, so we have um, him going to this prison, and I was thinking about that going, you know, he walks in, he's talking to this guard and stuff, and it made me wonder if this might be the scene where we get a Cletus Cassidy reference. Maybe he's, you know, in a cell and it's, you know, Tom Hardy's been coming here to at the beginning stages of his Life Foundation, you know, research. And he's maybe heard about some prisoners that have gone missing that are from this jail. And that would make a lot of sense if Riz Ahmed is pulling, you know, homeless people and prisoners to use them as sacrifices for his experiments. Uh, that would make a lot of sense. And not a lot of people would probably miss those type of people, um, you know, who, uh, you know, no one would be looking for them, I guess. And so uh, I thought this was, this could be that. So you have Tom Hardy walking down the hall here with this guard. And looks like he's taking some notes, so he's probably asking about some inmate that was here. Uh, who we don't know, you know, but uh, but maybe maybe that'll be a chance where we get to see some Cletus Cassidy action. Uh, then this next shot I have here is the yellow symbiote. Uh, you can see little tentacles coming off it, and little hands, and it actually looks very scream-like. Um, I know some people were also mentioning it could be one of the other symbiotes, but I'm thinking if they are going to do multiple ones in this movie if they don't do all five, because I think five is kind of busy. I know some of you were like, no, it's got to be five. That's the comic book. Uh, but to me, uh, five is too many uh, for, you know, to give each of them like a, a personality. I mean, even in Lethal Protector, none of them really had any personality. Maybe Scream a little bit, but she wasn't even fleshed out more until later on in the comics, uh, like Separation Anxiety and other stories. So to me, you know, 
I hope they kind of restrict it to maybe just Riot and Scream and uh, and Eddie, you know, and Venom, I guess, um, and then maybe lay the groundwork for Carnage or Lasher for future films, or whatever. Um, but yeah, I still like the shot. It, it definitely gets me thinking of who it could be. And there's that blue one in the background, which we're going to see here soon, uh, attached to um, our friend Jared Bankins, I think. I think that's the same symbiote. So it looks like we have a blue symbiote and a yellow symbiote. Um, and then Riot is kind of gray. So maybe we're already up to four symbiotes anyway with Venom. So uh, so we might have, you might get all five after all. Um, then we ha I got another shot of this. We've seen this in other trailers, but we got uh, Riz Ahmed and all of his scientists. I think Jenny Slate's back there, and Shope uh, um, is from, from Black Panther. She's back there. Um, and I think Reed Scott, and we're going to see Reed Scott later on. I don't think that guy's Reed Scott. I think he's just someone else. But uh, And then there's Dr. Emerson uh, next to Jenny Slate. Um, but we are going to see... Uh, Reed Scott later on in this trailer, which I almost missed him uh, when I was going through this shot by shot. And luckily I went back and freeze framed at the right moment and was like, oh, that is a good shot of him. I think that is Reed Scott. Um, so uh, here we have the patient that is, you know, in a cold box. Uh, so we don't know what symbiote has bonded with her, what's going on with her. Maybe, um, you know, this is the one that, this is the lady that might jump out here at Tom Hardy. We see in the red hallway there, and it looks like she's either taking a bite out of him, or she's, you know, she's, her head is definitely into his chest. So when she jumped at him, she tackled him really good. And I know there's a lot of speculation that maybe she's, and we talked about this before, that maybe she's passing on a symbiote to him, or who knows, maybe she just tackles him to the ground, gets up and runs out, and then he runs out, and uh, and she's, you know, a symbiote on the loose, you know, that has to be dealt with later, or maybe that's how Riot gets out, who knows. Um, but it would be really interesting to see how this works out. And uh, they did say Riot and Venom had a pre-existing story, you know, from the interviews, they said they have a backstory together from wherever they're from. And so, you know, maybe, who knows, maybe that's a father-son relationship or a sibling relationship and uh, and maybe, or maybe just the suit gets passed on to Eddie here. I don't know. I, I've been trying to think of every possibility, but uh, but it, I think anything I come up with, I'm just a total fanboy and I think anything I come up with is going to be just way too far. It's going to be way too detailed for what they're probably actually doing in the movie. So I'm trying not to let my brain go too far in that world. And that's why I don't make a lot of speculation videos on here. Um, it's because I kind of don't want my brain to go too far into that territory because I'll just set myself up for disappointment or I'll go, oh, I liked my idea better. And yeah, I don't want to really go that route uh, with this. Um, so then we have a shot of Eddie Brock. He's in the woods. And, you know, I think there's uh, something in the background behind him. I can't tell. There's something over his shoulder. It could just be a tree or a bush. It's out of frame. Um, it could be someone running up on him. But uh, I know there's guards and stuff chase him down in the woods and then when he makes it home i think he says something about you know like he passes out in the comic-con footage they showed he like took some pills and passed out and, like hit the couch and then had flashbacks of running through the woods so i'm thinking he ended up getting home without remembering how he got home and maybe that's where the symbiote comes in and maybe it helped aid him uh to get away from these guards and he doesn't remember it um and so yeah he says that line where he's like i've been taken and so we have here um, a shot of him with uh, the eyes, you know, and it's uh, they looks a lot, lot smoother than the last time we saw this. So I think they touched up some of those effects in his eyes. Uh, so yeah, he's been taken over. Now he has uh, a symbiote in him. And again, we have you know shots of uh, around the world, um, and we had uh, Hong Kong here. And I'm wondering if these are just shots. Uh, here's a second shot here. I'm wondering if these are just there. Be, you know, while Riz Ahmed is giving his big exposition scene, maybe he's like, hey, you know, the world is in trouble. Even though all these shots are really beautiful, I think it doesn't match with what he's saying. He's like, oh, the, the world is on ecological brink you know, of extinction and we're, you know, we're crumbling and everything. And then you have these beautiful shots of these cities <laughs> from around the world uh, as he's talking about it. And so it kind of makes me wonder, like, is is the world really in that much danger? Um, I would rather have, you know, it's a visual medium. I would rather him say like, oh, this is what's going on. And then, you know, talk about, you know, war in the streets, talk about riots, talk about, you know, talk about things like on that level. I know it's cliche to do that, but at least that helps sell his point more as opposed to these like really beautiful shots of around the world. So maybe, you know, hopefully they'll fix that or these scenes are maybe out of context, uh, which is fine too. Maybe it's just showing the, the reach of the Life Foundation. Maybe it's a Life Foundation commercial, you know, where it's like we have, you know, places all over the world, like the Umbrella Corporation. You know, I always compare them to Umbrella. Um, so then we have a shot of the world here, which I'm wondering if will be like there will be a scene where the shuttle's coming in and it crash lands. 
Uh, so that'd be cool. And I think it crash lands in China. So that's another reason why, uh, you know, the picture of Hong Kong, I'm kind of curious about. Um, I think when the shuttle crashes, it is actually in China. Uh, and then I think that's where the Life Foundation gets, you know, their symbiotes and stuff and, and brings it back, I guess, to San Francisco. Uh, but then here we have Carlton Drake giving his big speech to our friend Jared. Jared's being walked in here on this shot. Um, you know, by these hazmat dudes. This reminds me a lot of the Umbrella Corporation, actually, um, bringing in the test subject and then the guys wearing the hazmat suits. But I like this shot. I'm kind of curious about the connection here. If maybe he, if Riz knew Isaac, the character, that's who uh, Jared Bankins is playing. He plays a character named Isaac, as you've seen in some of my intros, which is super awesome of the guy to make those intros for us. And then Ari Ariadna as well did some intros. And we have a couple more intros from other actors of the movie coming up soon, too, which I'm very excited about. Um, but we have him here and there's like a connection. And I'm kind of wondering about that because Riz kind of doesn't care about human life. He even says it. He's like, you know, human life is like an individual life doesn't matter compared to the greater goal. And so I'm wondering why this connection. And maybe he's saying like, hey, I'm connecting with you because you're about to become something more. You're going to become something that uh, is going to be better um, than all of us. And, and you're the first step of the new humankind or something. Uh, so that'll be interesting to kind of see why he's making him feel that connection or maybe he's just trying to comfort him because maybe you know if he's irritated it irritates the symbiote who knows could be a dozen reasons again i don't want to go too far into speculation uh, but here we have the blue symbiote which has some orange veins in it which is really interesting and it does come off and latch onto him but here it doesn't look blue there's a hint of blue and purple to it um which i think purple was agony or another symbiote but um and then here you can tell the effects aren't done on this shot when he's on the ground. Uh, I think I, I forgot to get a, I didn't get a good screen grab of it, but there, the next shot is like the symbiote actually crawls out of his mouth. And the effects there looked a little bit more finished than what's on his chest right there. So I'm kind of curious what's happening, why it's bonding in this way. There doesn't seem to be a consistency, which makes sense because each symbiote is different. Um, so maybe they bond differently or they react differently to people or maybe it depends on the person who they're bonding with, you know, and that is how they, you know, connect with them. Um, I don't know. Um, I'm thinking I'm starting to have a theory that maybe Venom is an offspring of another symbiote and maybe that's why he acts differently from everyone else's because he's so young and maybe that's why he doesn't have powers because he hasn't developed them yet. He can't make weapons and stuff because he's not, you know, as learned as the other symbiotes. That's at least a theory I have going right now. But again, I don't want to speculate too, too much, but I'll just put that out there for you guys. Um, and then here I saw people kind of questioning, you know, why is he freaking out? Why this digital effect? I think I saw Grace Randolph uh, make her video and she said something like to that effect of like, hey, I don't understand. I think they're just doing it to be cool. And it's like, well, if Grace ever watched any of my old videos, which I, I know why she wouldn't, uh, you know, she's like a big YouTuber and, and I'm me. Um, but she would know that since the beginning, we talked about MRIs. I'm a brain aneurysm survivor, so I've been in MRIs. They are, they, sh you know, release radio waves and radio waves do uh, agitate a symbiote. So just the machine being on um, would agitate the symbiote and it would cause it to reverberate and it would cause it to twitch in a way. So I don't think that effect though is fully done. I'm still, I'm sure they're still working on it a little bit, but I thought these next few shots of him twitching and moving around and stuff were really good. And I think it was good body acting from Tom Hardy as well. I think he's doing a great job here, uh, selling this. Um, and then in this shot, actually you can see Anne weighing right there in the bottom right corner checking in on him so she's here this is the scene where she says um, um you're scaring me eddie like this is that scene and i think it's him just acting different acting erratic and she's like go into the mri get your head scanned let's see if there's a tumor let's see if there's something going on here um and uh, and he probably gets in the machine and once it's turned on it pisses off the symbiote and he tries to crawl out of it because when you're in an mri you can't move you know for the most part you got to stay still for like 30 minutes or something um so him crawling out would be uh would be you know make sense and then he's like maybe moving around the room twitching and all the doctors are like what the heck is happening to this guy um but then here you see the digital effect that you see the symbiote going up his neck but then you see this echo of um of the suit and what's neat about this is they kind of hinted at that in the teaser trailer if you remember the teaser trailer at the very end it's like misty green like moved and made the eyes and then it spelled the v for venom and that's kind of what this reminds me of it it kind of looks like an that kind of effect on him um just in a use slightly differently um and then we have here we have the symbiote in the car i saw a lot of great memes now that i'm on twitter again i saw a lot of great memes uh shared by a lot of you guys uh with this image which is really great people saying like i want fries with that not i want 
fr- part of the franchise or whatever it was and then another one was like hey get in <laughs> you know like we're go- we're going we're going on a road trip or something uh, there's a lot of great memes of this which i thought was really great um but uh but yeah this so you get this shot you see eddie seeing his reflection and the symbiote is kind of mocking it in a way just being like yeah i'm I'm gonna let you see what i want you to see because now i have control of your eyes and your vision and so you could you're gonna see what's really inside you and then the symbiote pulls him back against the wall and then they have that whole conversation which is uh you know god that's got to be scary right like if you're in that situation you're just like yanked up and you're just up against the wall and you, you can't move um i think that's uh that's it could be very intense uh, and uh, hopefully that scene plays out really well, and hopefully we see the symbiote in other ways. It's not just a reflection, but hopefully, like in the shot we'll see later, hopefully it comes around and talks to Eddie. That would be great. Because uh, a lot of the shots that are in this are from the first teaser trailer, just with added uh, visual effects. Um, so we're actually getting a lot of the same footage, just in a completely different light now. Uh, this next shot we have, uh, we have Scott Hayes, actually, Eddie Brock is apologizing to him, which I don't know why he's apologizing. Uh, these guys did come in to kill him. Uh, but uh, who knows? We don't know the full context of the scene yet, so, you know, whatever. Uh, but Eddie is apologizing as the symbiote wraps up around Scott's head. And this looks like it'll be the first time Scott Hayes gets away, and it looks like he might get away a second time later in this trailer. Uh, but as the guards come in, you can see Eddie's address is 1404. Ever since I saw the movie Dark City, I've been obsessed with knowing people's, um, like, like characters' uh, addresses. I don't know why. But in um, in Dark City, there was, like, it was like the character's name was John and he was like in apartment 319 or 320 or something. And if you look up John and that number in the Bible, it's a passage for resurrection. And John kind of resurrects in this scene and wakes up in a tub with a new life. So um, so ever since then, I look for little weird things like that, I look for meanings and stuff. So 1404, but you see the real shot here is Eddie getting pulled away by the symbiote and being brought to safety as someone comes in. And then Eddie like rolls around on the ground, kicks a table and stuff. And so it kind of like upgrade where the suit, you know, the digital chip inside the guy took over. But in this case, he has this suit that is like external and running around him, moving around him, grabbing stuff, grabbing his legs, making them, you know, kick and stuff. So uh, so a lot more visual uh, aspect to it. Um, and then here we have the shot of the trolley. And the trolley is, uh, we saw people cast like Trolley Boy and Trolley Boy's mom or whatever. Um, so this looks like a scene where maybe Eddie is looking at innocent people and being around innocent people. Maybe even trying to explain the difference between an innocent person and a bad person to the symbiote. Uh, maybe this is the scene where he's like, look, I'm, I'm kind of buying what you're selling, but we have to we have to aim it, you know, and uh, and I'm wondering if that's going to be the relationship in the movie. But uh, but this I think being in the city, being on a trolley, being around regular people, not only to blend in and hide from whoever's chasing you. This is a you know, pretty good place to hide, you know, just be on a trolley and no one will see your face and you can hide in, you know, on the trolley itself. But uh, also a good place to see everyday people and maybe get a sense of and teach, you know, what it's like to be an everyday person to the symbiote. Um, So again, just a theory of mine. Uh, This shot here with him in his house, you know, going, I think this is when he's going after the attack on on his apartment, because I think that's his apartment back here. And it looks like someone's opening the door here, uh, like his neighbor, because you can see the chain lock. So this is someone across the hall um, opening the door. Maybe this is even when Eddie threw the guy through the door and he's coming to check on him and he starts to mutate. And I think this is when he's first starting to mutate. And this is where, like I said, the evolution. I made a video a while back about Eddie Brock evolving in this movie and I thought you know this would be a you know that that's kind of what I meant too is is like and now it's kind of nurturing my new theory where I think the symbiote is born and given to Eddie and then it develops and that's why we see it do different things or act differently or react differently in some of these shots and see it slowly grow because everyone else like it jumped that one symbiote jumped on Jared and started to tear him apart came out of his mouth it was like painful and instant I'm thinking this is an infant level symbiote in this one and it's growing with eddie and then as it, as it develops it's it, it grows naturally into eddie and maybe that's why he has a more symbiotic relationship with it as opposed to someone who's just taken over again just a wild theory of mine i'm not sure it's true but we do see stages of him changing as opposed to where everyone else kind of looks like they might change instantly so, um, but you have the shot here with, with him coming through, the teeth are coming through, but I like this next one right here where his eyes bulge, like the white comes out. And this almost reminds me of like a werewolf transformation sequence. So that would be really cool. And I think soon after this, he might even jump out the window, um, to get away from these guys as they get back up, I think. So, um, so this, you know, we may not see him fully transform here, but I thought this was cool and he looks really awesome <laughs> in this shot here. Um, 
And then here, I definitely want to talk about this. So this scene here with the symbiote, this was at Comic-Con too, but this is the scene where he's leaning up against the, the water tower thing. If you remember, I'll try to find the image and put it here side by side. Um, but that was from Matthew Libatique and Tom Hardy, you know, Instagram, this image out where he was on a green screen. Uh, so all that background, like all that green screen and stuff. And it looks like a really great shot. And Matthew Libatique's angle, if you remember, he was in that picture kneeling down trying to capture the frame of Eddie and uh, and you see it here and this is really cool to see a behind the scenes feature and the final product like side by side uh, for me I think that's really neat and to see like the evolution of a process so you saw those shots of you know Tom Hardy leaning against the thing looking around and then now we see what he was looking at so that's really really dope and I'm glad we got to see that kind of evolution I'm glad I get to share it for you guys in this video so these next few shots are when Eddie Brock uh, falls off the motorcycle. I think this is when he's driving, and I think we're going to see like an explosion later with him on the motorcycle. So we'll get to that. But I think he either crashes or you know he gets shot or something with like a rocket launcher or something. Um, but he gets blowed up and uh, and flies off his motorcycle. And as you can see, his leg is pretty much decimated. It's broken and bent in a completely different direction. Kind of comical in a way, but uh, but also very horrifying. And then you also see um, his fingers look broken there in the shot there. Uh, they look broken. And, and uh, then here you see his elbow. And this is a scene that was described to us before and a scene I think I told you guys about before where his elbow, the bone is sticking out and the symbiote leaks into it and starts to reform it. It bends his leg back in. So we made a whole video about the suit having a healing factor. So um, And then we also made a video of comparing this again, showing the the scene before when they shot it and then later so I'll try to put the side-by-side -side comparison up I think just Jared had these photos like a while ago we did these this video like in December I think of last year where they filmed this in Atlanta and uh, and Eddie Brock or Tom Hardy was laying on the ground and Scott Hayes was standing over him and he was like torturing him or he was like tasering him or he was doing something and then uh, and uh, Jacob Tamori, uh, Jake Tamori who is uh, Tom Hardy's you know stunt double he was standing just off camera and he, when Tom grabbed Scott Hayes by the throat, uh, Jake Tamori grabbed Tom Hardy's other hand and pulled him up to give him this look, you know, this like raising up look. And so uh, that's pretty neat uh, to see, again, that filmed and done very low key and low budget and not look very spectacular. And then, you know, just like a friend helping another friend up while he's holding another guy's throat and then cutting to this and seeing, you know, this is, is really, really awesome. And we even saw Tom Hardy, I think, laying on the ground with his leg bent back and stuff. So we saw all those, we covered all that stuff before and it's great to see again, the evolution of this stuff and, and see it uh, evolve to the big screen. So yeah, I really dig this. This stuff is just really cool and nice to see. Um, and then we have here, again, just another shot, the big shot uh, there. You'll see there is kind of a little bit of a design, but it's mostly a meeting point for all the veins, like I said. So it, they kind of come across like legs coming out of his chest, but they're not really. There's no core or, you know, or, you know, spider body there to hold them all together. Uh, but I still think this shot is so cool. And uh, I think they sell it really well. And I know the visual effects aren't 100% done on this scene, but it's, it's getting there. And I think this will probably be polished very, very soon. And a lot of people were asking me about the visual effects. They're like, hey, yeah, I thought this was supposed to be more completed since Comic-Con. It's like, well, Comic-Con was just a week ago. And trust me, they showed a lot more at Comic-Con than we saw here. There was extra scenes that were shown at Comic-Con. And it was more gory or a little bit more brutal at Comic-Con. So uh, so here, you know, they, they're still playing it safe. And a lot of people were saying like, oh, they don't even know what rating they're going to make this movie. And Ruben Fleischer even admitted that. He said, you know, we really push the envelope. We, we are really pushing for an R rating, but that is up to the ratings board. Like we will do our version. We'll do the best we can. And, uh, and but it's the rating board is going to be the one who rates it. We're making the movie the way we see fit and we have it and it's brutal and there's some swear words in it and there's other things uh definitely in the trailer we're getting the tamer version of a lot of stuff so we've already crossed that bridge we've talked about that in previous videos where he admitted like i don't know what this is going to be rated but we are pushing for r and we're gonna we're in the kind of movie we're making seems like it's an r movie but you know for it might fall into some loopholes who knows uh where it might go or they might decide at the last minute to cut a couple things to make it pg-13 so more people can go see it but i thought the whole point of this movie was to make it rated r because it was a response to like Deadpool and Logan so I feel like it's probably going to be rated R uh, but these visual effects yeah they're not that much done because they still took some of those clips from Comic-Con and included them here uh, that was only a week ago if you remember Comic-Con wasn't that long ago uh, so there is still a lot of work to do and I think they even I've heard someone say they might have even brought in some 
extra people to work on the, the, the visual effects of this uh, just to make sure everything's polished and as good as it can be before the movie comes out. Because I think we're, what, like two and a half months or less away from the movie coming out. So, yeah, it's it's crunch time now. Uh, but these people are wizards. Trust me, I've seen, like, early cuts of, like, you know, even Transformer movies that uh, I was like, there's no way this is going to get finished in, like, two months. And it, it did. And I was like, wow, okay, crazy. <laughs> so these people, they know what they're doing. This is their job. They'll make it work. Trust me. Um, but yeah, that shot's really cool. I think it, someone even showed me a picture from the video game where he's holding up Spider-Man. I think I even saw some memes where someone photoshopped Spider-Man into this shot. Uh, but I'll try to include at least the, um, the video game comparison up there, uh, which I thought was cool. And then the shot of him licking, which is, you see the earpiece in Scott Hayes' uh, ear, but you see the drool going down his face, which is, re that's a really good detail. And this angle of Venom, like, that looks full-on comic book, like, cool. Like, it just looks really, really awesome. Um, and then we're going to see that scene later. A lot, I think uh, some other people I saw in their videos where they were saying, like, oh, I think you know scott you know scott hayes you know he, venom is talking too much he's saying like i'm gonna eat your pancreas i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do that you know and i think this might even been grace again but she said something like you know you, sh you better deliver on your threats eddie and i don't think he does in this one i think he tosses scott hayes aside so i think scott hayes lives again whatever his character is i think it's he's playing roland trees but we haven't got that confirmed or anything yet um but yeah, so then you have Eddie here using his shield to not only save people, but save himself. Uh, so he's actually using the symbiote to make a shield to catch bullets. And so, we, you know, we've seen him do that in the comics where he spits them out. Um, and since we've seen that happen so many times in movies, it's nice to see it done a different way here. Uh, but the visual effects here are not done either. I think they're still working on this, but you get the general idea of what's happening. Um, and then they, this shot here where Venom is running uh, across the bridge. I love this shot because you actually get to see him in action. I said this way back early on about how he moves because people were like, well, is he going to swing? Is he going to, you know, shoot his, you know, symbiote out to swing and stuff? And I was like, I'm pretty sure you're not going to see him swing, but you'll probably see him leap around like the Ultimate Spider-Man video game where Venom just kind of like was like the Hulk in the Hulk video game where he's just like, Oof, you know, runs on all fours, jumps, you know, leaps really high and tall. That looks like what's going to happen. So he's just running across this bridge, um, and uh, we see a building back there. I can't tell what it is. I don't know if it's the prison or what, um, or this is the climax of the scene, because this next scene here, we see, like, kind of a train going by, and you get this great shot of Venom looking right at you, right at the camera, which I love. He looks amazing. Um, I really dig in the look. It's, as I like I said, it's as accurate as it could be without the spider symbol. Obviously, we would all love that. That's the most iconic thing about him, but, you know, give it time. Maybe, maybe we'll see that in a future movie or they'll come up with an explanation for him to come up with such a symbol. But for here, at least uh, he looks good for for this moment. And I'm thinking all this is from the climax of the film, so hopefully we're not getting in too much into spoiler territory because when we see the final shot with him and Riot, uh, there's definitely a setting there that I think is straight out of the animated series, actually. And I think one of you, Colton, or one of you guys on Twitter mentioned that too. And I was like, oh, I noticed that big time. I noticed that giant rocket ship. So we'll get there. Um, but Anne Wang here, you know, saying, hey, Eddie, I'm kind of afraid. But she's not talking to Eddie, though. Um, she looks like she's talking to Reed Scott. And uh, and the reason I say that is because, um, well, first of all, he's in a lab coat or a jacket. And uh, she's just saying in general that she's scared. But here we have uh, Eddie in the MRI machine. And, uh, and you see the digital you know, face on him. And I think they did this with Topher Grace a little bit too when the bell rang. No, it wasn't Topher Grace, it was uh, uh, Tobey Maguire. Uh, Tobey Maguire, when, he was, when the bell was going off in Spider-Man 3, and that, you know, there was like an echo of the symbiote coming out of him. Uh, this kind of reminded me of that, except they're doing a little bit more of a digital thing. And again, I think that's because there's sound waves and it's reverberating, so it's causing this visual echo around Eddie. I don't think it's there just for the the cool looking factor i think this is i think it's here because uh it, it this was their version of it they were like hey we need to visually show what sound does to the symbiote um and so let's do something visually different to to give off a different vibe of the pain it's in because i'm sure when it's on fire it's going to have like the typical receding and pulling back and screeching and stuff so this you know adds a different visual element to it um so I kind of dig that. Uh, it looks really cool. And I'll get back to the Reed Scott thing and, and Anne Wang here in a second. But I think she's talking to a doctor there. And I think that doctor might be Reed Scott. Um, and then here we have Michelle Lee. And we a lot of us were th theorizing because of her IMDb page. It says she's playing Donna Diego. Um, if she is Donna Diego, then Do Donna Diego is an EMT apparently. Um, either that or... 
this is the the woman who broke out of the the you know the the cell uh, in the cold room. If it's the same woman, um, I did. I remember we did a close up shot of another woman from that cell where there was like a red light behind her and she looked like Melora Walters and Melora Walters was uh, apparently cast in this because she has a stunt double in this movie and I was like why is there a stunt double from Melora Walters when she's not even listed on IMDb so who knows maybe there's some things going wrong there as far as like you know m you know information being told properly uh, but I, that was it looked a lot like Melora Walters if you go back and watch our other videos uh, but for this I'm, I'm kind of wondering if that lady in the cold room is different from the lady in the red room or what's going Going on because there is you know scream and agony are the two female symbiotes um, so but you see here she's using a blade and it's gray so I'm thinking that maybe this is Donna Diego if that's her character name is just a very small part very you know has a small role in it maybe we see her one other time in the movie and then she pops back up later so that we have a connection to her um, and we're like oh that's the lady from earlier or something and then I'm thinking this is when Riot is jumping into bodies to get away and so it looks like she you know she's making a blade maybe even for the first time and then she turns around and cuts this dude's throat and you can see the cut right there on his throat and I don't know if his full head's gonna come off or if it's just gonna be a throat a, a cut again they're still working on stuff um, so for all we know his head could pop off in the final you know version of the movie um, but to see her here as an EMT uh, it's, it's interesting because I wasn't kind of expecting that I was thinking she was going to be one of the soldiers for the life foundation and then turn into maybe scream or something but uh, it looks like maybe riot just is infecting random people and they did say that you don't know who riots gonna be in and that would definitely amp up the the movie is if riot is jumping into innocent people and causing Eddie you know giving him difficulty to fight riot because he's like hey I, I the suits like you know maybe venom's like I want to kill this thing and Eddie's like no it's in like a woman who's like a EMT she's a good person like you know so that would add some conflict there between Eddie and the symbiote so I'm I'm kind of interested in that um, this shot here this big white shot of the fire again I think this is done purposely I mean obviously it's done purposely but I think it's showing the effects of what fire does to the symbiote and the host that has the symbiote so if Eddie's on his bike which I think he is I think he's holding a handle there or he's doing something um, or maybe this is from the final scene in the movie where he's like trying to stop the space shuttle or you know whatever trying to shut a device off and maybe it explodes and you're seeing the initial reaction of the the fire and and the pain it puts Eddie in and maybe the x-ray flash of you know uh, pain that it puts the symbiote in even more so uh, I don't know I just that's a very neat shot though I really like it uh, and then here we have Eddie Brock kind of scaling as venom this giant scaffolding they're still working on the digital effects here I can tell the visual effects um, but this looks like it could be in that area where he crossed the bridge where the train went could all be the same place could all be from the same final battle this looks like kind of scaffolding and towering that would be next to a space shuttle launch and you even see something exploding back there going off and plumes of smoke coming up much like a space shuttle launch so I'm wondering if that's kind of the climax is maybe there's they're sending something into space to go get more symbiotes and you know or something like that because they did say Planet of the symbiotes kind of ties into this and in Planet of the symbiotes there was a few symbiotes that got to earth and they infected random humans and built a like a stargate to bring other uh, symbiotes from Clintar the planet Clintar which apparently is no longer a planet now according to the comic books um, but it it's pulling the alien race it, trying to transport them to earth so this would be interesting if riot is trying to build a shuttle to either get off earth and go get more symbiotes and bring them back to earth or maybe there's some kind of plan there um, I don't know um, so I doubt riot has world dominating plans as far as destroying the planet I'm thinking he wants to control the planet is what I'm thinking um, so yeah so that's pretty interesting and then here we got some SWAT guys coming in I love this the first shot was a really good shot with the SWAT patch and everything but the second shot here I really like where this guy is just Eddie Brock's like guys you don't want to do this trust me and then you just see the camera moving up like it's signifying that Eddie is growing as the symbiote and you see this guy's eyes and he's like like his eyes sell it whoever this actor is that that shot I really like his eyes sell it and then he has all these soldiers behind him that look like hunk from Resident Evil which again just makes me want to talk about you know the the umbrella corporation even more it looks like a bunch of spare costumes from the Resident Evil movies um, and then here we have Scott Hayes being slung so you actually see Eddie Brock throwing some guy and that's full-on Scott Hayes so I'm thinking he comes in threatens he'll eat his pancreas licks his face and then 
another threat or a symbiote or something shows up behind Eddie to get his attention. And then maybe Eddie turns to look at it and just tosses Scott Hayes aside because he's like, eh, he's just a human. He's not going to hurt me. What's this thing coming at me? So it looks like Scott Hayes may actually survive this scene unless Venom throws him into like a wood chipper, <laughs> which I don't think a random wood chipper would be out there, but that would be kind of funny in a dark humor kind of way. But I think he's just tossing him aside and we might see Reed Scott, uh, I mean, not Reed Scott, but Scott Hayes here come back later in the movie, um, you know, after this scene. So I don't think that's the last we'll see of uh, Roland Trees if he's playing Roland Trees. This tagline here of the world has enough heroes, I really, really like. Because I think the first trailer was something like, uh, you know, like embrace your inner anti-hero or something. And I don't know, that's that's fine. That works too. But I don't know. I like this. Uh, what I think is funny about this, though, is that, uh, that uh, you, know, every, you know, there's a lot of people out there pushing a little too much that like, hey, this is so different than everything else we're getting. And it's like, well, this is, I would agree that this is kind of different than what we're getting from the MCU movies, but this doesn't seem that much different than, let's say, what Fox probably did with a couple of the X-Men movies and uh, and what, you know, like what we've seen with other stuff, you know, like Blade and stuff. Like, I'm a longtime comic book fan. I remember, I mean, I'm Richard Donner, Superman days, you know, comic book fan. Um, so, to me, I'm like, I've kind of see, lived long enough to see it all, so this doesn't wow me in that way, uh, but I do like that they're really selling the fact that this guy does have a broken moral compass. Even though he seems like a, a guy you like, th I'm sure there's going to be things in the movie that make you question his morals, uh, because that's true to the character of Eddie Brock, I feel. Um, and so uh, so this tagline, though, of like, the world has enough heroes, I think is, is good, especially for this trailer, where it's just like, you know what? you know screw saving you know the day in a way like screw you screw not eating someone's head off like we got our own morals here uh, but again if you watch like punisher or anyone like that you you know you kind of already know there's characters out there that blur the line and kind of exist in that way uh, but i still like the tagline a lot i think having that on a poster it says the world has enough heroes and then venom october you know whatever like that it's, it's cool to me i think that's pretty neat um as far as taglines go it's it's an appropriate one for sure uh, and then we have here again i think this is all from the last scene of the movie uh, this is probably the launch sequence you have ann weighing you know running possibly saying you know her last chance to see eddie or say goodbye to eddie or, or go to do something maybe she's going to go like shut a machine off or something i hope they don't do anything like that because you know like i think they did that with gwen stacy in one of the movies and that kind of made sense because they made gwen like a science nerd i think ann's like a lawyer and she's, she's got like a different purpose in this movie but i do i heard she does have a she's more than just the girlfriend is what i heard whether that's true or not, we'll see. I hope so, though, because she's a tremendous actress, and I would hate for her to be just reduced to something that just shows up, you know, a couple times in a movie. Um, but I think she plays an integral part, and, and Ruben Fleischer did say that she's kind of a foil for Eddie. She's kind of Eddie's villain. If Venom has, you know, the, the Riot symbiote, Eddie kind of has Anne. They're like ex, you know, lovers that have had a falling out, and then he, you know, she hooked him up with like an interview with the Life Foundation to help him get his career back on path as like a you know token of good faith or something or because he charmed her maybe and then uh, and then that blows up in her face and his face too and so it doesn't seem like she really care like likes him that much even though she cares about him but she might not like him that much and so there's definitely friction there so I'm curious to see what exactly she's running to in this because obviously everyone else is running away from it and she's running to it and I'm thinking it might have something to do with the launch or whatever so so uh, I don't know, it looks like it could be from the climax of the movie, but again, that's just me, you know, guessing. Um, but here is Reed Scott. So this first shot here, I couldn't really tell who he was, it was too blurry, but then I got this shot of his face, and I put a side-by-side -side comparison of his headshot, and the eyebrows are kind of the same, the hairline's kind of the same. So it looks like Reed Scott, if he is playing um, Toxin, I guess, or the character that becomes Toxin, which is, I think, Patrick Mulligan, right? Um, I'm guessing he's Dr. Patrick Mulligan because <laughs> uh, Patrick Mulligan in the comics is a cop. Uh, he's not uh, he's not a doctor. Uh, so I don't know. They could easily change his profession or he could just be Dr. You know, nothing like he could just be not even be a main character. He could just be someone who shows up a couple times to be Eddie's physician during the scene. Because I think the only stuff we see him in is these scenes where he's here. And I think that's him talking to Ann Wang earlier in that earlier shot. So he may just be the guy who's operating the MRI machine. And then maybe he works for the Life Foundation. And that's why the symbiote reaches out at him. Because maybe the symbiote's like, hey, I recognize this guy. You don't know who he is, but I recognize him. He was at the Life Foundation. So uh, he's, not, he's not on the level, you know. So maybe that's why that scene's going on. Uh, but then we have this shot, and this is great. This is the money shot as far as the chest symbol goes, because now you see that he does not have like a full-on design. There is a design as the veins are 
you know, coming to a point, almost look like lightning bolts coming, and there's an empty spot there. Um, and this is kind of reminiscent of, of some drawings that have been done with them, sometimes in the Ultimate Universe, where they kind of like, he gets, you know, purple as, it, you know, his skin gets lighter as it goes out. It's, it kind of reminds me of that with these veins stretching out to break up the black. But again, I think Ruben Fleischer said it, and we've said it in previous videos, makes no sense to have the spider symbol for obvious reasons. He doesn't meet Spider-Man in the movie, but also, um, because uh, it, it, you, you need the, the, the veins in there. You need something to break up the black. Otherwise, he just looks solid black. Uh, and I totally agree with that. And in, you, in the background there, you can almost see sh uh, thrusters or something from either a shuttle or those are either you know, wheels or some kind of machinery that are like a conveyor belt-ish or you know, something whipping around. But uh, this, again, I think is from the, the climax of the film. And the background doesn't look fully done either. So that's why I'm thinking it might be from the climax of the film. Um, and then again, we have... Donna Diego, maybe, or the we have the EMT lady here, Michelle Lee, played by Michelle Lee, and she fires out these gray spikes, and she kills most people, except for this old lady, it looks like, but she kills all, all the, you know, guards or people coming up behind her. Um, and she's standing over fire, which is interesting, so I'm wondering if she's gonna, as Riot is in her body, I wonder if Riot's gonna, like, put its hand down to see what effects fire has on it. Maybe this is a learning scene for that character, uh, trying to figure out its limitations. Um, so that would be pretty neat to see, uh, you know, throughout the film, if, if Riot is learning as Eddie, you know, as Venom is learning. Um, and then we have here this big giant explosion. You can kind of see toes at the end of the suit, which is cool. I think Matt Gargan had that. We're going to talk about a lot about Matt Gargan coming up now that we're in that phase of the comic books. Um, but he had like toes on his feet, uh, you know, like as far as the symbiote goes. And it looks really good. And you can the fact that they have that detail in here shows that this is probably a nearly finished shot. Um, but you have this big explosion in the background, which again, I think could be the space shuttle blowing up or could be the space shuttle taking off for all we know, you know, whatever. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's a cool shot. <laughs> that's like a, that big explosion. Um, and then, of course, we have Riot here. And so in this scene we saw before in previous, I think the teaser, where everyone's computers went off their desk and everyone dove under their desk and they were jumping out of the way. And I thought it was, um, and this is why I don't speculate a ton because I'm usually wrong, uh, but this this was where I thought maybe the, the MRI machine exploded and caused like a, because uh, there's magnets obviously there too and MRIs, and it caused some kind of magnetic interference that, launched all the electronics in the building or anyone on the floor above them like launched it all away i thought that might have been the case but it looks like we have riot here with the axes that he makes and uh, and that is something i mistook when i saw the comic-con footage for being venom and uh, and clearly it's not venom like now that i got a better look at it it is not venom, obviously so thanks for whoever corrected me on that one because i was trying to write everything down and do everything at the same time and um and i got confused very very easily um, and then we have a shot of Riz Ahmed here. A lot of people are saying they couldn't hear what he said. Um, it's, I mean, I don't know. It's, he says great leaps um, could lead to, you know, like that's like something bad. Like I, I, I can't remember exactly the quote, but I didn't have trouble understanding him when he said it. But it's something like great leaps cause, you know, don't come without great sacrifice or something like that. And uh, and I'm wondering who he's talking to here because I don't recognize that person's head. That doesn't look like Tom Hardy's uh, head, obviously. And I'm kind of wondering. What doctor or what patient or what person is that Woody Harrelson like I'm kind of curious whose head that is because um, I can't tell if one of you guys has a good guess let me know in the comments below um, but he's talking to someone and you actually can see something like a grid or a map on uh, behind him and I'm wondering if that's them formulating their plan or you know building towards something or maybe riot is inside this person's body and and Carlton Drake wants it you know who knows but uh he looks pissed either way. Carlton Drake looks really upset uh, there. Um, and then again, we have the scene where the, the suit, you know, Riot is just cutting all the computers in half. And uh, and you see a similar picture of the Earth on the monitors in the background. So I'm wondering if this is all happening in this, not the same room, but in similar spaces. But they have the same kind of graphic or similar graphic on those TVs back there with, um, you know, with, uh, with the, the globe, I guess, and uh, or like a map of the world. And then you have the same here with uh, Riz Ahmed standing there. So yeah, it looks very similar. Um, and then you have this shot, which I saw a comparison. It was, wasn't was the first thing that popped in my mind, but uh, it did come to me later on the day when I was at work. And then I saw, I was like, ooh, I'm so smart. I'm gonna make this comparison on Twitter. And then I saw like a hundred people already do it. So I was like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm way behind the curve on that one. But this shot here with Riot pulling 
Eddie's face and symbiote off of him, uh, you know, like pulling that venom suit away from Eddie is straight up from Carnage Unleashed, uh, which we talked about on the show. I, I'm not a big fan of that miniseries, but that cover is really great where Eddie is like, ah, like that, and I'll have the side by side up here. Uh, but one critique I did hear from people and even a co worker about Riot is that the colors. So obviously we have like a blue symbiote or like one with a bluish hue that we saw at the beginning. And then we have um, the yellow symbiote. And so now we have, uh, you know, a gray one. And the gray one is just like, th that's the only downside about it fighting Venom is that Venom's black and he's kind of gray and silver. Their colors are too close together. And so there's no like great juxtaposition between the two visually there's no contrast between the two so they look like two gray black messes fighting each other so i hope there's still work to be done on on riot to differentiate him obviously he looks a little different he's got a, a different style head there's little eyes or something popping up instead of although there looks like one clean eye maybe but then like there's these bones or bumps on him that could be other eyes so they could have more like a spider-like head which would kind of be a nod to Riz Ahmed's um, Arachnus project miniseries where he becomes a giant spider creature that Venom has to help Spider-Man defeat um, so it could be that but then you can see his hands there's like veins in his hands and his hands are bigger he's clearly bigger than Venom so there are visual things to separate him but I'm surprised they went with a similar color that's my only thing is I know they're trying to be comic accurate and be like well Riot was the big one but in, in this case, I'm kind of like, ah, I would have rather you had Lasher and just had him be bigger. And that way you could have a green symbiote against Venom's black symbiote. And the colors would just look better uh, to me. Um, but who knows? Maybe there's still work to be done here. But then here you got another shot where he's pulling it away further. And he's got a big grin. And again, he just he looks like another Venom. Like the, the Carnage has a very distinct look because he's red and he moves differently than Venom. There's a lot of visual elements that make him immediately noticeably different. Riot looks similar you have to see him in action to know how different he is and that's i kind of have a little bit of an issue with that to be 100 percent honest um but we'll see how the film handles it and then we have this shot this big money shot where uh where it's the effects aren't 100 percent done i'm sure but you see the rocket back there and i don't know if this is the crashed rocket or if this is a rocket that's going to take off um maybe there's something on this ship that riot wants and he's trying to get back to it and eddie's going to stop him maybe there's other symbiotes on this ship that the carlton drake didn't know about uh, and riot wants to go release them like who knows who knows what the plan is uh, but it looks like this is going to be the final confrontation and you can see that kind of tower scaffolding back there that eddie kind of runs up earlier venom runs up uh, so yeah you're seeing all this here but this shot i actually really like this shot as far as like a a painting you know it, it's almost like uh it's it's almost like you know uh it just like looks like a really awesome comic book panel painting uh like a wraparound cover for a comic book series um but the only thing and i think maybe even grace and one other person pointed this out and i noticed it almost immediately and i kind of remember a little bit from the comic-con footage too is the lack of expression on their faces the actors faces and i had a theory about that i was thinking because in other shots we see of eddie he kind of has a dead look on his face remember that first when that first trailer came out and the suit wraps around his head eddie just kind of has this like he goes quiet like as the suit's coming over he kind of recedes back he his his face goes blank he doesn't really show any emotion and uh, and the suit kind of takes over and eddie's in there conversing with him but he's just like a, he's just bones you know like he's just the inner workings of a greater creature now and so uh, so he's just motionless like bones don't have an expression you know except I guess the skeleton on your face the skull kind of looks like it's smiling but but really it's just it's just this flat look and that's what these people become I think so that's kind of my theory is that it was a decision made by Ruben Fleischer and the team to have them do that as from an acting standpoint is just to go dead and then kind of show you the soullessness that you know they're kind of succumbing to of like allowing these other beings to take the take the forefront and take control and so that's what i think is going on i think that's put i don't know whether any other way to explain it because i think both riz ahmed and tom hardy are good actors and i know it makes sense for them to maybe like scream or yell at each other or interact and, and mirror what the suits are doing be like ah you know like facing each other and then have the suits around them doing the same thing um 
but at the same time, I feel like uh, it seems consistent so far of what we've seen with previous footage of Tom Hardy just kind of going blank. Although we are going to see a shot coming up here where Tom kind of lets a little smirk out uh, as the suit's taking over. So, you know, maybe that's him at the end of the movie kind of getting used to it. But, um, but yeah, I'm thinking there's a reason for it. And I, I don't know, but that's just me you know again speculating so we'll see if uh, if i'm right about that but then we have another shot here i just wanted to get two shots of this image because it just looks so freaking badass <laughs> i know i don't curse a lot on this show but i you gotta give it up for that um this like i said looks like it would make a great wraparound cover for like a venom versus carnage one shot or something um and uh yeah just beautiful stuff and then you see the symbiote here falling back like it's being ripped away but you and you see like things coming out of it and you actually see something in the air there off to the left or you know whatever right above venom's head there's something like a little glowy light and some symbiote action around it so uh yeah i don't know if that's coming from him or if that's coming from from riot but again like i said you have a, a black symbiote here and kind of a silver one and uh just they don't clash as well as something like white wood like white for anti-venom and and black for venom like that clashes really well in a visual medium like on a comic book page gray and black doesn't so much so it's i'm i'm a little concerned about that um but overall you know it still looks pretty awesome i told you this was going to be a long video but i want there's a lot of things i had to say and i knew i was going to ramble a lot so i appreciate you guys for hanging in here as we get to this final scene here which is the convenience store scene which at comic-con they showed more of this um there was a little setup for this scene where the guy was harassing um miss chen back there and um and so there was a kind of a setup for it. But here you're just getting the, the thing everybody wanted to see. Uh, obviously in the Comic-Con trailer it goes a little bit further and you kind of see a little bit more of what happens to the guy, but they do cut too as well. Um, but you know, it was definitely implied that he ate this guy or bit his head off. So we'll see what the final product shows. Uh, I'm thinking maybe he'll bite his head off and there'll be blood everywhere and they'll add the blood in, but, uh, but again, we'll see. But I do like Tom Hardy's reaction to it afterwards. But this shot here, you get a really, it's a well-lit room you get a really good shot of Venom. And a lot of us theorize that maybe this could be happening in a lab because um, when we shot, saw this shot here, it didn't have the guy's face in it. And we were thinking, oh, that's the hospital or whatever. But no, it's definitely the convenience store. So we were all a little bit off on that one. Um, and I don't know who this actor is. I'll try to look him up. Uh, but uh, he's, his facial expressions are really great. He He's acting like he's really looking at a giant monster. So big credit to this guy for selling the fear in this scene because he totally looks like, he's like, he's look, it's fear and confusion. He's like, okay, I live in a world where this nothing like this exists and I'm now seeing it and it's here to stop me from doing something bad. Like, what the hell? Like, am I seeing a demon? Um, but yeah, you get this great shot of, of Venom there with the eyes and you can see his eyes are very expressionated. Like, he, you know, they, they move and everything. They come to life, much like the Deadpool eyes. Um, they added that in. You can see the smile going all the way back. This, of course, the shot that we saw online. Didn't have the guy in it, but now we see it in its full entirety. And... Uh, and yeah, he just looks, he towers over this dude. And a lot of people were saying that this could be from the end of the film after Eddie has adjusted to the suit. And I'm inclined to believe that. I don't know exactly where this happens in the movie. It could be something that's like a, a little D story of Eddie going to this convenience store. I think this is the lady that tells him he doesn't look so good, or maybe that was a different uh, convenience store. Um, but I think it might be a running thing throughout the movie. And so this would make sense if at the end he's kind of like, hey, I have a parasite, you know, and he's more comfortable with it. Uh, and, I, and I think I saw someone else. I think maybe it was Jeremy Johns who said he wouldn't put it past Sony to put the final shot in the movie uh, in the trailer. And that's true because they did that with Amazing Spider-Man 2, <laughs> um, which I knew when I saw it. I was like, ah, oh, that's the end of the movie. That's got to be like he's going to fight Rhino and it's going to end. And that's exactly what happened in the movie. <laughs> um so, but this shot here, I love this shot. As you can see, I have a new intro and I definitely included this in there because a lot of people were asking me to put the We Are Venom back in there from, from the movie clip. And I actually was thinking that that scene where he leans up and he says, We Are Venom, I, uh, even though it, his mouth was moving, it didn't look perfect. And I was thinking because they took that audio from a different part of the movie to end that last trailer with. So when he rises up, you know, I think he doesn't say We Are Venom. I think he just does it here, but who knows, maybe he does it twice in the movie because, hey, that's a good line. It's from the comic books, and I would probably use it twice in the movie too. Um, but seeing it here is great, so I definitely had to add it back in. So if you guys start getting sick of seeing the scene and you think it's going to ruin the movie for you, let me know, and I'll remove it again. But for now, it's going to stay in for a while just because I love it so much. And again, you see Tom Hardy have that dead eye look. Once that suit is around him, his mouth and everything still moves. His eyes are there. They're open. He's cognizant of what's going on, but he 
he doesn't feel anything towards it and that's in keeping with other clips we've seen before and i think that's just because you your body goes into like sleep mode essentially and you're just sleeping with your eyes open um that's at least what i'm equating it to and i think that's something they thought might add some some horror to it and i think so too because once you saw that in that last trailer that thing go over hardy's head and he just kind of goes he, he's like like has a like an expression and then all of a sudden he just goes and he just looks dead it made it kind of send a chill up me because I was look really looking at his eyes and he looked lifeless and it looked freaky to me. Um, so here it looks like he's repeating that. But in the second shot here, you can see he does make a face. You can see the veins and everything going, you know, in inside of him. It's like, you know, causing veins to come out of his face. But you can see kind of a little smirk, I think. It looks like a smirk. His, his lips definitely, you know, come together and, the, and his, they move for sure. But it looks like a little smirk. And so I'm thinking maybe that's because by the end of this movie, if this is from the, la from the end of the film, it's him kind of accepting the symbiote and being like, all right, like, uh, you know, we're good. You know, I'm, I'm now going to have fun with this thing. Uh, that's at least what I'm thinking here and then boom this shot here which just looks awesome and his eyes look great the smile looks great it's like I want this to be my driver's license picture <laughs> just go to places people are like I'm like oh you want to see my ID when I use my credit card and they're just like what the you know that'd be awesome you gotta make that happen um this shot I thought would have been really cool and I think you can you can't I was I really looked at this image so the image of the mouth coming up you can see a few rows of teeth but what I thought would have been really cool and would have helped sell that horror element, and it would have been really subtle too, uh, because you would have had to catch it really quickly, is if in the back of the mouth, if you saw Eddie Brock's eyes, um, I think that would have made me go like, oh God, you know, like, because <laughs> imagine like being a monster coming to eat your head off, and then all you can do is just stare right down its gullin. You just, just a gull, you just gonna be like, oh my God, its mouth is coming right to me, and then all of a sudden you see two human eyeballs in there. That would freak me the hell out. I mean, that would the last thought in your head it would just be like, what the, f you know, you wouldn't be like, oh, I'm dead. You would you would instantly go, are those eyes? And then you get eaten. Um, but yeah, I thought that would have added a little bit of horror to this scene. But obviously, this scene kind of plays up the humor, as you see here. This performance, by the way, by Tom, I really really loved. He really sells this dialogue, um, big time. Where he's just like he makes his face he's like oh, oh oh you saw that like he did it right in front of her and he's like oh uh, oh I'm sorry Mrs Chen you know and he's like uh, I got a parasite you know like he just kind of casually says it and by the way there are shirts that I think I'm going to be making this weekend probably uh, one that says I, I have a parasite on it and one that says um uh, turd in the wind and uh, with like a drawing and stuff I think we're gonna maybe make those shirts and and put them on a Teespring or I don't know we'll come up with something. Um, but if you guys are interested in that, let me know. Uh, I think I'm just going to make them just so I could buy one for myself and wear it on the show. But if you guys are interested, you know, maybe I'll put it on a site somewhere if uh, if the, you know, if it looks cool, I guess. <laughs> we'll see. I can't, obviously I can't put a picture of Venom or anything copyright on there, but I have some ideas that I, I was sketching out at work today. So, um, but yeah, and I, that's the last image I have is Tom Hardy walking out of the convenience store saying goodbye, Mrs. Chen. And he's kind of got this look on his face like, mm, all right, all right, another day another day with this creature you know attached to me so um yeah so like i said i knew this is going to be a long video and uh, hopefully you guys are okay with the quality and everything i think when i do my response video to your guys questions i'll probably record it the same way just because like my phone it's great for like 10 minute videos because i can record half of it and then you know stop the recording and then record another half and then by that point my phone's kind of tapped out i have to dump th it's it's not even about memory space it's just sometimes my phone gets weird it's two years old i have to get a new phone anyway i'm just waiting for my you know um my service to run out so that way i can get a free upgrade and i think i'm only like a month and a half away from that so or maybe not even that long so we're i'm getting close to getting a new phone so don't worry i won't have this problem much longer uh, but for now at least for these long videos i'll probably do this format just because it's a little bit easier even though the quality is going to make me cringe and i'm going to be upset that it's not as good as my phone is um but still, you know, you know, this is what I, these are the tools I have. I'm doing my best. So you guys, uh, you guys let me know though, what you think of all this. Is there anything in here that we didn't cover that you wanted me to cover? Any little Easter egg thing or, you know, something you wanted me to reference that I didn't reference? Let me know down below and then give me like a, a couple days or maybe a day or so to do the response video because there's a couple other Venom videos I'd like to make real quick and I'll try to bang those out tomorrow, uh, which is Wednesday, my day off. And I've been recording for an hour. It was 1130 when we started and it is 1230 now. So that is my indicator to stop uh, because it's getting way too late. I don't want to like keep
keep my roommate up or anything like that. So I appreciate you guys watching this very long video. I hope you enjoyed it very much. And let me know what all your thoughts are of this down below. I know some of you were expressing yeah, that this movie doesn't look too good to you, that you didn't, you, the CGI turned you off, or the movie just looks iffy, it looks like a big mess. And we will definitely talk about that in the response video for sure of what my opinion on that is and why trailers are cut a certain way and who they're trying to target and uh, that they're not really made for us even though we tend to like them a lot of times uh, but they do show all that action stuff and everything to get the mass audiences at least looking you know at this movie and get a little interested uh, but for us you know it sounds like they put a lot of thought into the character of this movie and I think that's going to be the reward of going to this movie is you might go oh, you might drag your feet going to see it uh, but I think that hopefully the reward of it is that they do a really good character piece on Eddie Brock in this movie and I think if they do that then most people will be happy but it's a it's a matter of getting people into that theater first so that's a bummer if some of you are turned off by this but I completely understand um, you know your response and your reaction to that so we will definitely talk about that more in our uh, response video for sure because I want to respond to those comments directly so thank you guys as always for watching my show I really do appreciate it like share subscribe all that fun stuff and we'll see you in the future peace